Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me! Fine, how you doing? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what?! Eight I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour. Welcome aboard. It's the Barbecue Central Show. We talk about live fire barbecue and grilling I teams here each and every week, Tuesdays from 9 to 11. You can catch me over on Clubhouse as well, where we are live. If you want to ask a question to any of my guests this evening that remain, that would be Jess Priles or Daniel Vaughn. Make sure that you get up on there, search the room, and away you go. We are recording, of course. Don't forget, you can follow me socially on Instagram and Twitter, TikTok, Snaps, Slash BBQ Central Show on Facebook and Twitch for video feeds. Slash BBQ Central Show. Also on YouTube for a video feed. Slash R.D. Rempe. Also, for podcasters, you can get an ad-free podcast experience through Patreon, which is patreon.com slash BBQ Central Show, or through the Apple Podcast app itself. Coming up on the best moments of the best... Hmm. Coming up on the best... Can we try again, please? Hey, coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less this Friday, if you can believe. We are one away. Episode 199. Nine times. 199, taking you back to October 10th, 2017. You know, we have talked about smoked cream cheese at nauseum the past month or so. We just did it in the first hour with Stephen Reichland, who, by the way, said during, did he say Project Smoke? Was it Barbecue Bible? Somebody that was listening, tell me in the instant chat. But he referenced all of the things that he had smoked. Smoked ketchup, smoked mustard. He said smoked butter, by the way. Did anybody hear smoked butter? <laughs> Smoked but smoked water didn't want any of that for smoked ice for your bourbons and old fashions and Manhattans. But he had made reference to smoking pretty much everything. But we have been talking about smoked cream cheese for a couple months now because it's a social media juggernaut. Friday... We look back at one of the biggest barbecue social media hits called Pork Belly Burn Ends. Remember that? Matt Pittman from Meat Church was my guest back on October 10th in 2017. And we talked about this whole Pork Belly Burn Ends deal. It tracked back to Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, taking issue with the term Pork Belly Burnt End all being used together. And then that gained steam from there. Matt took it upon himself to stand up to Ray and said, hey, this is just one way to call it. There's a big enough swell of support to say, hey, because of the process. Now, the process typically done with brisket, brisket burnt ends or just burnt ends. But because of the process, we can say that this is some kind of burnt end. Again, because of the process. Now, personally, I thought there could have been a way catchier name than Pork Belly Burnt Ends. Couldn't there have been a better? Like, leave Burnt Ends out of it. How about Swine Cubes? Swine Cubes has a nice ring to it. Or Pork Pieces or something along these lines. Pork belly burn ends to me seems lazy. Like you're just using 
burnt ends because we already know something that's cubed and cooked like this. And look what happened. It was on. I'm not saying people don't eat pork belly burnt ends anymore, but it's not nearly as hot as it used to be a couple of years ago. I think if that thing would have had a much catchier name, we'd still be talking about whatever the hell was catchier name right now, but we're not. It's pork belly burnt ends. But if you missed all that scuttlebutt from four years ago, you want to make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast feed and you will get the whole rundown from back October 10th, 2017 as Matt Pittman from Meat Church was my guest and we talk all about it. Now, don't forget, if you want to hear a past guest or segment on the show in this kind of a format, email John. He puts them all together, J O N at the BBQ Central Show.com. Tell him what you would like to hear, and he will do his best to meet your expectation. And then there's this. Guess who's freshly back from the Harry Styles Love on Tour concert. This guy. Now, before you're all, oh my God, what? Harry Styles. Who's Harry Styles? Well, maybe we're not all in the same station in life at this point, but I have three daughters and at least two of them. I would venture to say all three of them, 20, 18, and 16, are in some form or fashion a fan of Harry Styles. Originally, Harry Styles was part of the super boy group One Direction, and then for whatever reason, that blew apart, and he got into a solo career. He's now two albums into this solo career, and he's having quite a successful life, I might add. But the youngest one, Marley, is just fascinated with this Harry Styles, and we got tickets for her for Christmas going on two years ago and we were ready to knock it out of the park last October, but guess what? Couldn't do it. That That was put off. That was delayed. Well, finally on October 18th of 2021, Harry Styles came back to the rock and roll hall of fame city and put down a concert. The likes few Teens and early 20 ladies will never forget anytime soon. The Gundarina slash Q, currently Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, or as we call it, Romo Fijo, packed to the rafters with fans of Harry Styles. I think aside from myself, there was one other man in the whole (laughs) arena. At some point during the concert people are screaming Harry Styles is dancing and having a great time singing one of his hit songs you know the one I'm talking about and I looked at Maddie and I said she's the college 20 year old uh, 18 year old and I said there's a lot of women screaming here this evening and she said dad I think you and that guy down there are literally the only guys that are in this Uh concert tonight it's all women otherwise So I quickly gauged. She was pretty much right. It was me. I would like to say that there, I would like to think there were a couple other dudes opposite me on the other side. We got some nice club level seats so we could see him from a distance. He performed in the round. So there were a number of times where he was singing directly to our section of the stadium. And I, you know, I don't know on a scale of one to 10, where I would rate this Harry Styles concert for me, because I wouldn't buy a Harry Styles ticket on my own. I wouldn't. I swear to God, I wouldn't get off your keyboards talking about. Yes, you would. You know, you were there by yourself. I have pictures to prove it. Check out your social media. I was with three other ladies. But I rated a 10 out of 10. And here's why. Because when that Harry Styles shot up from the middle of the stage in the round, is that what you call it? 
and started playing that hit song to lead off the show. You know the one I'm talking about, that one. She began like tearing and it looked like maybe she was going to get ready to pass out. And I thought, this must be what it was like in the 60s when the Beatles came to town and women were screaming out loud and getting ready to pass out. And I've never had that amount of passion for music where I just had to see somebody like that and then it would affect me emotionally. But to see her tear up and it was seeing this person that you admire so much and the music that she connects to so much and see it happening right in front of you as a father, that's a 10 out of 10 for me. To see the unneeded words of appreciation, the tears streaming down her face, singing at the top of her lungs, to that song that he sings that's a hit. You know the one. That one. That's what makes it a 10 for me. Can he sing live? Did he sound good? Yes. Did Ariana Grande sound really good two years ago when I went with the same kid? Yes. She was great. I'm probably a bigger fan of Ariana Grande than Harry Styles. But when pressed, am I a bigger fan of either of those two or some kind of rock music? No. But they sing really great. Anyway, next week I'm hoping to get to this story if I might tease you with it. Men, are you getting down? Either with your partner or yourself at least 21 times a month because if you're not, you might be doing yourself a health disservice. I'm not kidding. You know you want me to get there. I don't know if I can, but we'll see. Let me talk to you quickly about Yoder Smokers. Designing and building all of their products right here in the States. Building pride through craftsmanship, world-class customer service. That's the backbone of how they've built the company. This approach translates into what can be a truly bespoke style product that elevates gatherings with friends and family. They are honored to have a trusted place in the backyards of America, from pellet grills to wood-fired offset pits or charcoal grills. Consistent blue ribbon flavor has become synonymous with the Yoder Smoker's name. Make no mistake, Yoder Smoker's flavor-driven design is unique to each style of pit. The team has developed the cookers to perform time and time again while outlasting the competition for generations to come. It's this generational thought that's rooted in the handmade products that define the integrity of the core values. American-made quality, endless flavor, the benchmarks of Yoder Smokers. Visit Yodersmokers.com, and I continue to effort Yoder Smokers, but obviously they're very busy, so I will continue to effort them, and there you go. Uh, We're looking for Jess Priles, and if she's there, we will have her when we come back. Stick around. You're listening to the number one most downloaded barbecue and grilling podcast anywhere. The Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Smithfield. Head on over to smithfield.com through the grilling season, which is all year round, for recipes as well as tips and tricks from world champs like Chris Lilly, Darren Worth, Ernest Cervantes, Charles Cridlin, the list goes on. Mouth-watering flavor, no artificial ingredients. Smithfield Fresh Pork, quite simply, some of the best pork money can buy, trusted by world champion pitmasters for use at competitions and at home. If you are a competitive cook and you're reporting first-place finishes with ribs and pork shoulders, go to smokinwithsmithfield.com and do that there. My first guest in the second hour, CEO of the Hardcore Carnivore brand of products, also known as the Spokeperson, for a number of high-profile brands, a book writer, social uh, social media expert as well, Barbecue Central Show guest, Hall of Famer, as we found out last time, which was new to her. We welcome back friend of the show and quarterly guest, Jess Pryles. Hey, Jess. Hi. How are you? Nice to be here. 
I'm pretty good. Not going to lie. I always love hearing that intro from you, especially in that voice. Oh, wow. I've got to record it sometime and play it at parties. You could uh, set it as your ringtone for me. You know, when I call, I mean, you would rarely hear it, but on the off chance I call, then you would get the whole <laughs> run up. I mean, how potentially great and slash awkward could that be? Um, both of those slash things. Yes. Definitely. How about that? Yeah. So yeah. we let off last visit with the announcement of that Tex-Mex seasoning that you had recently released to rave reviews. By the way, I was talking with Daniel Vaughn a little bit earlier as we were sound checking his mic, and he said that he is a huge fan of your Tex-Mex rub. Did you know that? I did not. Daniel's always been an amazing supporter, um, but, you know, and he eats a lot of barbecue, probably more than anyone we know. Um, so to have him say that, particularly as a, he is also an adopted Texan because, as you know, he is originally from Ohio. Ohio. Oh, yes, he's a Buckeye. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit, big praise, pretty big praise, pretty excited. It's been selling really well. Um, it's, it's one of our best sellers now and we're super stoked that people are, are liking it. I personally, obviously, am always selfishly excited when people like the seasonings because I blend them myself and I'm like, this is what it should taste like. So when people are like, we agree, it's nice. He told me he's putting together a Tex-Mex top 50 list in Texas and yours is <laughs> number one. How about that? going to be dropping Yay! tomorrow exclusive right here on the show. So let's well, play out a hypothetical situation here, if you don't mind. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. You have a new seasonal rub that's it's out right now. I actually did see it for sale on the Hardcore Carnivore website. It's called Fried Turkey Seasoning. So yes, let's sir. address that first before we get into the hypothetical situation, I guess. Um, what's the impetus for Fried Turkey Seasoning release? So uh, I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a limited edition. We've never done anything like that before. Um, and I came up with the idea of I, I hadn't seen a rub specifically for fried turkey and frying turkey. And one of the big things when you fry turkey is obviously getting a really lovely color on it, which is sort of secondary to the taste. Um, but particularly when you're using a rub with sugar, it can burn. So I developed a seasoning that looks really pale in the um, bottle. It's jalapeno, garlic, and sage flavor. So it, you open it, it just smells like the holidays with a bit of a Texas twist because the jalapeno kind of cooks out well uh, and it's not too hot. But because it's that color, once it fries, instead of a rub that starts off really dark red with a lot of sugar in it that can end up looking quite burnt, it turns the perfect golden brown. So it is for fried turkey, but on top of that, because of the flavor combo, we've used it in turkey pot pie and in stuffing, and it's just a great kind of holiday seasoning. And it's one of those ones where I'm not sure that people necessarily want a sage rub all year round, so perfect for a limited edition holiday one. Do you, so it is going to be until sold out. Do you believe that turkey is really ultra seasonal? In other words... So, okay, I'm going to contradict myself here. Uh, let's say this. Outside of barbecue restaurants, push that over mm -hmm. to the side, because a lot of barbecue restaurants will have turkey. That's There's a lot of barbecue restaurants that perhaps are known more for how awesome their turkey is than some of the other barbecue <laughs> meats, but nevertheless. Uh, the normal Tom, Dick, and Harry and Jane are going to have turkey next month. Maybe they'll mm -hmm. double up again a month later for Christmas, turkey Christmas, uh, if they're not going to do prime rib. Uh, we used to do that where I grew up. And then, like, boom, it's gone. You'd never see turkey again. Not in January, mm -hmm. not in April, not again until next November. So I always yep. think of it as this thing that magically shows up and then magically disappears just as quickly as it came. But it's, on the whole, widely accepted. Most people think it's delicious-ish. And <laughs> this fried turkey seasoning is something that can be done outside of a fried turkey, you can use it as a roast or grilled or smoked as well. Absolutely. And that, that's the thing. I know a lot of people like the seasonings to tell them this is what it should be used for and nothing else. But I love when people can get really creative about it. And I think, again, thinking about those flavors of jalapeno, sage, garlic, it can absolutely be smoked. It can absolutely be grilled. It would be killer in a green bean casserole in mm -hmm. stuffing, whatever. So don't limit yourself. Now, it is a limited edition, so through sellout and, and or the holiday season of 2021, the hypothetical situation now reemerges. If this rub okay. cracks into the top three of sales over the holiday season, mm. would it not make possible sense to 
put it in the regular lineup like everything else, or it has to be limited? I mean, first of all, I've made a commitment that it's limited. But second of all, I think tracking well during the holiday season is exactly what you would expect this thing to do. And then I do not expect people to be buying a fried turkey seasoning. Listen, I would find use for it all year round. I'm sure there will be people who are like, this is bomb. I need part of it. Uh, I need it in my pantry all year long. And if you're that person, buy like six bottles now. But um, I, I would be surprised. It's just one of those things, you know, it's just one of those things like, it will sell well now, but um, I don't expect it to. You don't expect like turkey brines, right? Could be a delicious turkey brine. Doesn't mean you're using it in March through August. Are you a turkey briner? I think it's BS. So, well, it's not. Okay. Now you're hitting in the meat science fields. Okay. So, brining meat does actual stuff, particularly yeah. if you're using a brine that has sodium phosphate. It does good things for it. But. Most turkeys, unless you're one of those people who's hunting down like a farmer's market turkey person, most turkeys that you'll get from the grocery store, be they whole or turkey breast only, whatever, are usually already pre-enhanced. They either call it enhanced or there's a solution. So they come pre-brined because the industry has tried to make it so that most people who don't even know what brining is, they're ahead of the game. And if you double brine on top of that, that's where it becomes like one, you can denature it and turn it mushy. And two, like the whole, here's the bullshit part that I agree with, which is you're not going to push any flavor in there. So putting your orange peel in there does nothing except make you feel good that you put an orange peel in there. And I'm sure there's a recipe on my website that says put orange peel in a brine because people want to see it. But the only part that matters is the sodium and the phosphate and the sodium phosphate. Uh, I I don't like it solely because of the potential mush factor. I would rather, and mm. I don't think there was talk at least any number of years ago where you would brine a turkey, and it gives you a bigger f up window for the folks that you know live and die by the breast thermometer that's put in mm. there by the which mm -hmm. you know is set to pop out at overdone, and then it carries yeah, over but to really overdone and blah blah blah. But the brining gives you was said to give you a bigger f up window is that do you find truth it, to that it sh shouldn't i mean that unfortunately so fortunately unfortunately those little inbuilt thermometers are mainly to you know help consumers out um anyone who listens to this show owns a thermometer it, i i guarantee it in fact if you do a poll you can call me a liar right now <laughs> but it's happening <laughs> i guarantee you that everyone listening has a independent meat thermometer and or probe and that's what they should be using and then you won't have that issue. Jess Pryles joining me here on the show, hardcorecarnivore.com, her retail website. If you want recipes, jesspryles.com is the website for that. So as we kind of circle back here, oh, wait, can I ask you from a packaging partner perspective, do you share who you're in business with, like co-packer wise, or is that a to the vest info piece? That's a, that's a to the grave info piece. For real? Um, let me put it this way. If we're I, very proud of who we're partnered with, but considering the market at the moment, uh, we will be keeping that under wraps. Yeah. If I said if good, good, good pack is hard to find. It's not, uh, it's not old world spice. It's not. No. All right. I got one more guess. These are the only two I know, yeah. by the way. It's not mm -hmm. sweet smoke you. It is not. All right, I'm done. We're, we're we are made in Texas, my friend. All right, of course you are, because mm -hmm. Texas is the sole planet Earth, right there. Um, Correct. Now well, let's circle let's back. Me, it's not the planet; it's just the axis. It's fine. Yes, it is. Texas is the sun, <laughs> and everything else revolves around it. Let's circle back to the fried turkey seasoning for just a second, uh -huh. but spin it okay. in a different direction. I've long been mm. jealous of those who create recipes. And I'm really good at making lists and then buying stuff and following directions. But I'm not the person who can be inspired by random things in the grocery store. But you're obviously mm. wired that way. So to that end, I'm curious to know, as a recipe creator who operates during all of these holiday seasons that happen during the course of the year, what is life like for you? I'm going to eat turkey on Thanksgiving I am probably searching out a new way to cook a turkey. 
And those things are coming down the pike fast and furious. So as somebody who's on the other side of that, what is your life like? This is, that's a great question. So we are a 100% Chinese food on Christmas family. Um, <laughs> that's what we do for the holidays because, um, so we have to start when you're a content creator or even to release fried turkey, you know, we had to have videos and, uh, visuals of the turkey done when the product was released. And if you think you want to talk about seasonality, you try ordering a turkey outside of October and tell me uh, November and tell me how it feels. Uh, it's possible, but it's difficult. So I do all of my cooking and obviously there's a lot of brand partners as well and people coming to me for content. You know, we want content, we want holiday content. So I have already cooked a full turkey, turkey breast two ways. I've already made three different types of stuffing and it's halfway through October. So once Thanksgiving actually rolls around, I'm like, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. I don't think we're going to do this, which is a little bit of a shame in some ways we get to eat the food, but then I truly get a bit of a day off, I suppose. So it's, it's weird. It's weird. Cause you, you really do celebrate, you know, all of these things early. Like people want Memorial day grilling content. So you're like driving yourself. It's not a problem because it's already nice here in March and April in Texas, but it's still quite cold in other areas of the country. So you just, you just get ready sooner, you know? Pulling the curtain back a little bit is Jess Pryles mm. and what she has going on. By the way, if you're in Clubhouse and you would like to ask Jess a question, just go ahead and raise your hand and I'll do my best to get you up so you can actually cool. ask a live question. So lists are endlessly fascinating to me. And I will say this, like a Texas Monthly who puts in the work to come up with their yeah. findings and publishes them and then takes whatever associated heat that may or may not come along with that list. The ones that I can't stand are the ones that are posted up as the best of this or the best of that. And whoever's putting this list together tosses out a bunch of names, but then takes the bag way out by saying, vote for which one you think is great, which really isn't like a list. It ends up being a popularity contest. Mm. And I don't really respect those lists a lot. I respect lists that people devise on their own and put their name on. What's your take on the top 50 list of barbecue and lists in general, I guess? Well, to answer the list in general question and what you just spoke about, I think that there's a difference between uh, a journalist curated uh, with a with a structure and a scoring system list versus clickbait. So we unfortunately are, at the moment are bombarded by a lot of listicles doing really well, uh, you know, top seven, 37 things you should buy on Amazon. They're all affiliate links kind of thing. So we're used to seeing a lot of them and the voting is obviously just a way for engagement and it's all just a bit of a trick, right? So it's cool. Texas Monthly has been doing this top 50 barbecue for many, many years now. It comes out once every four years and they have to, it used to be just two editors going around and doing it, or I think one at one stage, but um, now they have so many joints they have to visit because there's been an explosion even within Texas that they've had to really structure and, and filter down how they were going to do it. There's arguments. The list came out on Monday. Everyone's freaking out because um, there's some new places on there. A lot of people have shifted in, in uh, where they used to be. Um, a lot of my friends ended up in the top 10, which is awesome and very exciting. But it it... Texas barbecue has really changed in the landscape. So there are some barbecue joints, for example, Leroy and Lewis, which ended up at number five, do what they call new school. So they're only serving brisket on a Saturday and they serve stuff like kimchi uh, and like a kale slaw and really left of center, interesting chef driven barbecue. But the argument is, you know, I guess, can you compare that as to like, do you nearly need brackets now? Can there really be a top 50 or does it need to be new school? Like blood brothers in Houston do a Vietnamese combo, a Vietnamese Texas barbecue combo. Um, there's a lot of now, uh, Hispanic influence from Valentina's to, um, to brothers market to Hurtado and Panther city. And, it's not all apples and apples. It literally used to be everyone had brisket, everyone had sausage, everyone had uh, ribs, and that's the Texas Trinity. Most places have turkey. That's the only other place I see turkey the rest of the year. Um, but it's it's can you really compare it? So the main 
places that did well and Goldie's ended up number one and that's kind of like a super team of kids, kids, I say kids, of young guys who were pit masters at some of the biggest places in Texas barbecue. Um, but, you know, it, they're, they're, they've only been doing it a relatively short time compared to others and they are very hands-on. So they got where they got because their food is excellent, but they also offer consistency. So now the big thing to watch that everyone's kind of got their eye on is what happens when things explode because pretty much for the top 10, their, their doors the next day after the list comes out is just a line. Mm. So there's going to be an explosion of people trying to taste this barbecue and then it becomes how do they feed that many people and now they've got an issue, well, now they've got the challenge, not necessarily an issue, of scaling and meeting that but still maintaining consistency and that is the trick of barbecue. This is the that's Spider-Man why we don't curse, love right? Change. This is the blessing and the there curse of being on the list, right? Yep. 100%. Have you do you know a lot of folks that couldn't withstand the rigors that came along with making that top 10 and plummeted or has everyone pretty much thrived? Not at all. There's some new places that had never been on the list before because there's been so many joints open up in the last few years. Um, so, um, you know, Panther City Barbecue made number 10. I'm doing a class with them next month in Fort Worth and they weren't on the list before because they didn't exist when the last list came out, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, and there are some, like Louis Miller's not in the top 10. Um style switch here in Austin. I don't think made the top 50 Regals in Houston. were just under, and they've actually about to, they're about to announce a, a, all the places in Lockhart are pretty much off of it, which is the capital of Texas barbecue. Um, but I think they're about to announce 51 through a hundred as honorable, honorable mentions too, hmm. if they haven't already. Uh, we have a minute and a half left. Do you have any thoughts on what has been one of the most hot topics on this show over the past two months? Smoked cream cheese. It feels kind of lazy. It just feels, I, I don't understand why people are so excited about it. And I don't know that, uh, listen, I own a seasoning company. I don't want seasoning on cream cheese. Jelly, maybe. Sauce, maybe. I don't like that idea of the dry and the cream cheese. <laughs> Will Hardcore Carnival put out a recipe? Maybe if that's what people want. But for me, I feel like it's just, I, I don't think I would like the texture and I don't think I would like smoked cream cheese. I think I like that it's cold and and sort of, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Schmeary, yeah. right? It's got that schmear texture to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. It. and I feel like if you get rid of that texture and it just becomes like a weird whipped cream situation. When it's melted. Hey, Jess, you want to play a game? Um, I think I do, because I think I know what it's going to oh, be no about. no, you don't. But we're going to play <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> okay. Between these two songs, which is the best Harry Styles song? <sighs> You're the worst. Adore, <laughs> Adore You or Watermelon Sugar? Uh, Cowboys from Hell. <laughs> Final answer? <laughs> Cowboys from Hell. Hmm. Between these two songs, Adore You and Watermelon Sugar, Jess goes way in the left field, pulling out Cowboys from Hell. Is she right? <laughs> no. Of course not. That wasn't even an option. Even I knew that wasn't going to be right. <laughs> We know it, it's Adore You. Of course. Oh, yes. Of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, of course. You have this pl- uh, class coming up with Panther, <laughs> Panther City, which you had mentioned. Anything mm-hmm. else coming up you would like to promote before I let you go this evening? Uh, just hardcorecarnival.com, new merch coming, all fun Christmassy stuff. There's still tickets uh, available for the class in Fort Worth on November 13th, so come and eat some steak. All right, Jess Pryles can be found at hardcorecarnivore.com, as she had mentioned. Also, recipes over at jesspryles.com and follow her on social. Jess, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank y'all. you all. See you later. There she is. Jess Pryles right there. I do appreciate the reach for Cowboys from Hell, but not an option. And Daniel Vaughn is in the green room, so we will talk to him and ask him why Lockhart was shut out. Amongst other things. 
But first, the process. We always have to learn the process or relearn the process. But first, I tell you about Big Papa Smokers, the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue, a curated selection of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies. We'll get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything at the website, handpicked by Sterling Big Papa Ball himself from the award-winning rubs and sauces to the American-made grills and smokers. Big Papa has something for every type of outdoor cook to make you better. They have the championship rubs and seasonings, popular flavors like Sweet Money, Cattle Prod, Cash Cow, all proven winners on the competition scene and in the backyard. Offering 13 perfectly balanced flavors that will transform ordinary meals into extraordinary. Whether you're cooking to impress judges or grilling for your family, Big Papa Smokers award-winning rubs and seasonings don't disappoint. You can visit the website and pick up your bottles today. They also happen to be the owners of Granny's Barbecue Sauce. Looking for a new go-to sauce? Tired of what's out there? Pick it up. Find out why Granny's Barbecue Sauce and other top-rated sauces are available over at BigPapaSmokers.com. And aside from the rubs and sauces, they're selling cookers, and you know this. Are you looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use? Check out that Mac Two Star General Pellet Cooker. Big Papa Smokers is the exclusive Mac dealer, even offering special packages. Not a fan of pellet smokers? All right, take a look at that Old Hickory Ace BP. It's the only charcoal smoker that Big Papa trusts on his competition trailer. If you're not sure of what grill you need, you really can't go wrong. Call and ask questions. They'll steer you in the right way. Eight seven seven eight two eight. 0727, that's 877 828 0727, or shop their website, bigpopsmokers.com. That's B I G P O P P A smokers.com. We are back with the very first barbecue editor in the country, perhaps the world, Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly. He's on standby. Stick around. We'll be right back. Celebrating over 10 years of prolific and unparalleled live fire barbecue and grilling talk. And yes, it's still being done from Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet. Currently available in three sizes, a host of accessories to complete the experience. If you're a beginner, if you're a professional, definitely a cooker you want to add to the arsenal. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. My guest closing out the show this evening, barbecue editor for Texas Monthly Magazine. You also see him on the show for quarterly visits through 2021 as we talk about Texas barbecue and barbecue in general. Friend of this show as we welcome back Daniel Vaughn. Hey, Daniel. Hello there. How are you, my friend? How's it going? I am absolutely fabulous. I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I gave you props to Jess, Jess Pryles, who was on previously, talking about how much of a fan you were of the Tex-Mex, and it appears that I apologize for breaking the breaking news that there's a Tex-Mex list, top 50 coming out tomorrow, but she was on the top of that list. Oh, a Tex-Mex seasoning list. Yeah. I can't believe you told everyone about that. See? It's, I'm terrible. Man. I'm like the famous Dave. No spoilers. Dave of no spoilers here. The, Come on. I'm, I'm the famous yeah, the- <laughs> Dave of breaking news. That's for sure. No doubt. Yeah, so. the Tex Mex seasoning, though. Uh, yeah, you put that stuff on popcorn. I mean, it tastes like chili cheese Fritos. It's delicious. You love chili cheese Fritos? Yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, I love I love uh, Fritos. I know you said earlier that you don't like Fritos. Not the regular Fritos. Fritos. No. I, I like plain Fritos. I think they're underrated. Um, but And I love Frito Pie. But chili cheese Fritos and Frito pie with chili cheese Fritos underneath, man, that just, uh, yeah, that's the stuff right there. Let's go ahead and beat this dead horse while we're at it. Before we talk about who's on this list and uh huh, the top 50 and the top 10, blah, blah, blah. What's your take on the internet phenomenon of smoked cream cheese? Have you seen enough of it? Smoked cream cheese, yeah. Um, now... Yeah, I've I've never been tempted uh, from the videos that I've seen to recreate it myself at home. Uh, but what I will tell you is I have had some really delicious barbecue sandwiches with cream cheese on them. Uh, so I was at Style Switch in Austin, and they did an everything bagel with a sliced brisket and cream cheese. And it seems wrong on a lot of levels, but my 
God, it was good. Um, so yeah, just uh, I, I'll take uh, smoked stuff with my cream cheese, but I don't really see the need to smoke the cream cheese. Daniel Vaughn joining us here on the show. He is the barbecue editor over at Texas Monthly, tmbbq.com, the website, and, of course, at BBQ Snob on the Twitter if you'd like to follow him over there and see what he's up to. So before we talk about top 10, who the hell Goldies is, blah, 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 let's get the down and dirty first on how this list actually comes to fruition. What is the process so we all understand it fully? Oh, wow. Well, uh, you know, basically my, my job as barbecue editor is to uh, spend the four years in between our lists um, on a scouting mission. That's essentially what my full time job is. Uh, I mean, I got to write about those places as well. But really, I'm out there tasting, testing, uh, trying to find new spots. Uh, but when it comes time to put our team together uh, to actually put this list together, you know, we get like uh well, this time was our, our biggest team ever, where we're 34 people that we uh, put together, uh, all Texas Monthly employees, plus uh, there were three freelancers, just people that I, I know well, who uh, who I know know their barbecue really well. So uh, we put that team together, and I put a list of places that they must visit. And they're certainly encouraged to try places outside of that list, but there's a, a very large must-visit list. Uh, some of those places I haven't been to. Most of those places I have been to. Uh, so, you know, their job is to come back with a second opinion uh, for, for the most part. Uh did the food that I ate there match up with their experience? And that's important for, you know, a few reasons. It shows consistency. Uh, it also shows, you know, how does somebody who's not me, uh, what kind of food do they get served? I get recognized at a lot of these places. Uh, and also for the places that I haven't been, they need to be my, uh, my scouters out there trying to come back and see if there's any hidden gems. Anyway, they, they come back with uh, all their score sheets. I'm part of that team as well, of course. I, I choose a, a different part of the state uh, every time to, to go visit. And we come back and we compile all those scores, uh, put them in a big spreadsheet, and basically just start looking at who's the actual possibility of making this list. And then I go revisit uh, ones that I haven't been to in a long time, visit any new spots that I haven't been to, uh, and you know really try and track down who we think is top 10 worthy. And then we go to those places even more, uh, either myself or uh, Pat Sharp, our food editor. And yeah, and then we, we talk about it. We uh, Basically, it comes down to Pat and I, and we determine who we think uh, should be in that top 10, what order they should be in, and who should be in the top 50. So when your recon testers are testing their assigned venues, if you will, do you have any type of allotment or, or slop value, if you will, for what is taste subjectivity? What I might find to be overly appealing might not be overly appealing to you. And since technically the buck stops with you, how do you allot for just the difference in taste of humans? Well, we start off with uh, me giving a, a, a course on eating and judging barbecue. And uh, we have a score sheet, go over that score sheet and how they're supposed to fill it out. Um, and then, you know, I also I'm, I'm not just looking at all of their scores together in one big list. I'm also looking at the scores uh, grouped together by each individual taster. I, I need to see if they're an overscore or an underscore. I mean, all of these people will be going to places that I've been to in the past. So I at least have some gauge as to what those scores should be coming in at. And so if they're all, you know, it's on a five point scale, if they're coming in all fives and 4.75 or whatever, uh, then I know that's a, an over score there. And I've got to take that into account. And the same, if they are all coming in at three and three and a half, you know, that's just somebody who's, who's underscoring things. So, you know, I just try to try to take that into account as well. Daniel Vaughn joining us here on the show, talking about how, this whole process of accumulating what ends up being the top 50 and then furthermore into the top 10 for Texas Monthly. So you'd mentioned every four years this list comes out and that in between those, you're trying to find all these new places and revisit the standbys to make sure that they're up to snuff. Is there a certain point within the four years where this work becomes noticeably dialed up on your end to 
culminate everything? Is it like a year out or is it 18 months out or is it six months out? How does that work? Yeah, it starts about six months out. It's right after we assemble the team and uh, I give that course on how they're supposed to be evaluating these places and how they're supposed to fill out that uh, the, those sheets. And yeah, from that point forward, it's just eat, 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 travel, um, you know, just get as much barbecue time in as I possibly can. Why not do a yearly list? Too much? Well, it takes us about six months to put together. We pull in a lot of staff members who normally don't do anything related to barbecue, like as far as, you know, they have other duties at the magazine. And so to ask uh, that many people to basically spend months and months out of every year putting a list together uh, would just wouldn't make much sense. The, the other thing, too, is having it every four years, you really do get to see some changes, right? Um, and you really do get to see how not only how the 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 shift in Texas barbecue and the shift in the scene, but also how individual restaurants change in that four year period too. So, uh, we, we think that gives, you know, it, it also gives it a sense of being a lot more special that it's every four years. And we know that's a long time in between those lists. So that's one of the reasons that we, um, we do the 25 best new barbecue joint lists in between each one, uh, so that we can, you know, at least, give some props to some of the new places that have opened and not make them wait four years to get any sort of accolade. I don't know how you say, is this too much pressure or is this list too much for the state that it's covering? But as you're getting ready, all of the tallies have been made. You have your top 10 list. You have the 50, blah, blah, blah. Is there a lot of pressure on you? Do you find it? a pressure-filled situation where you're going to release this list and know that maybe there's some people over the course of the last five years or 10 years or whatever that maybe aren't on the list or they're not as high as they think they should be and perhaps that there's some type of a kinship between you guys that now might be broken or I thought you liked us more than this. Do you have pressure that you feel as this thing gets released every four years? I uh, you're talking about a couple of different things there. Do I feel pressure? The most pressure that I really feel is, uh, you know, did we do everything we could to get it right, as right as we could, to be as fair as we possibly could? That's really the pressure. Like, um, you know, my our, our managing editor, who is the one who tracks all of our expenses, uh, is the one who was just like, you really need to take that 700-mile round trip this week. Like, we're, we need to have this issue closed. And I'm like, I, I need to go get another opinion about this place. Or I need to go try these three places back to back to back. And uh, so that's that's more of the pressure that I feel. You know, there certainly I've been doing this for eight years. I have friends in barbecue. Um, and, you know, I... I, you know, it always hurts if I'm going to leave them off a list or, um, you know, there were there were meals that I had where I was eating the meal and in the midst of it, I, I knew that was the final meal at that place. And I just, damn it. Um, why did you have to give me this plate right now? I don't really have any other choice. Like we, ju we evaluate these places in a short window of time. And so... Uh, yeah. And then, you know, you also figure out pretty quickly after a list gets released, like who are the people who, uh, were your friends in barbecue? Uh, cause they knew that a list was coming up and, and you know, who are the people that actually have some class? Are there places that have been put together without any great business plan other than hoping to get on the list to catapult them into some type of <laughs> form of business legitimacy? In other words, they can bank yeah. on some crowds for a certain period of time if they get on that list to help them substantiate a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I get asked the question a lot, like, does this uh, does this list like make or break places? And the thing is, like, it certainly has made a lot of places. It's made a lot of places into uh, you know in into barbecue joints that are able to be much more profitable than they ever imagined. Um, you know, being in the top 10, being in the top 50 can certainly do that for you. Um, you know, does it break a place? Uh, you know, if if you have a loyal customer following, if, if you are able to please your regulars, 
that is going to be much more meaningful to your bottom line than than pleasing me or making it onto this list um and yeah if if you open up a barbecue joint and your business plan includes getting like a really great review from texas monthly or um or making the top 50 list like that's a pretty poor business plan like you shouldn't be trying to bank on that uh th- th- that hasn't stopped people from sending me messages uh you know complaining about the fact that they've mortgaged their homes uh second mortgage on their homes for this business and 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 how could i not understand that or that uh you know they've got a baby on the way and they really need um you know they really need the extra money so they they really need some good positive attention i mean the, the things that people the messages that people send me are are strange um so yeah, the, <laughs> there there are certainly people who haven't maybe thought through their business plan. Have you been offered large sums of cash to have somebody show up on a list? I have never been offered money. Um, honestly, what I have a bunch never of been cheap offered bastards money. out there. Come on, Texas, offer this guy well, a kickback. I mean, Grease his palm for crying out loud. It's like business basics one hundred and one. How do you think the mob operates? No offense. Well, to the mob. all right, yeah. So it's business basics one hundred and one. Right. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like with with a magazine like Texas Monthly that that actually cares about integrity. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, with a magazine like that, you know, with with everything that gets thrown around about the media and everything, uh, you get all these cynical takes of oh, it's just who advertises and it's it's whoever whoever gives the most money and whatnot, and it's just like. We just simply don't do that. Like there, I don't know any food critics who actually do that. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> I mean, it's like once someone actually learns that you've done that, you have lost all of your credibility for eternity. Like it's over. Um, so no, I've I've never been offered money to put a place on the list. I've never been offered money to uh, to give a good review for a place. I have been offered uh, flights to come try barbecue joints outside of the country mm. and i've taken some of them um but my conversation with them beforehand is i'm coming and i'll let you know what i think of your barbecue and i'm there's absolutely no guarantee that i'll tweet about it write about it instagram about it anything about it i mean if it's terrible i'll just say nothing about it uh and you know every one of them that i've i've done that three times um and you know every one of them understands that so, but no, within Texas, I've, I've really never been offered anything more than a hat. <laughs> Have you been ever told not to come back? Uh, so Kolochny barbecue, Hallettsville, oh, we're Texas. Naming names. It's open. Okay. S- Good. It's, it's open on Saturday and Sunday. And in the 2015 list, I went there to eat. I went and ate there for the first time. And it's been open since 1989, and I'd never heard about it. There was nothing online about them. They didn't exist as far as like the internet's concerned. They had no Yelp reviews. They had nothing on Facebook. Uh, wow. Just they didn't exist. And I went to eat there, and it was amazing. I mean, it was so good. It was this like little mom and pop place. Uh, Irvin Kolochny uh, was cooking the barbecue in the back over direct heat, making his own sausage. It was amazing. And so I wrote about it in my 2015 best new barbecue joint list. Um, new as in we'd never heard about the place, so it's new to us. And uh, so anyway, our photographer went to take photographs there, Wyatt McSpadden, and he said they seemed a little like unhappy with the attention, um, and they certainly were annoyed at the photographer. <laughs> and you know they were they were just an, they were an older couple who they didn't want any more business. They had all their locals. Uh, they were happy with what they had. So you got to call and pre-order at this place. Like they sell out before you, before the place opens, right? So you have to call and pre-order. Hmm. So a couple of months ago, I'm going through Hallettsville and I call up Kolochny Barbecue, place my order. And they're like, what's the name? Daniel. Last name? Vaughn. Are you with Texas Monthly? <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's me. Uh, are you going to try and put us on some list again? (laughs) And I said, I'm just coming in for lunch, ma'am. Well, you can come in for lunch, but I don't want to be on any more lists. That was too much. That was too much stress. (laughs) 
I don't like any of that free press, mister. City slicker. I said, all right, all right. Wow. So um, anyway, so I go, uh, I ate, um, and I came back in to grab something else, and I was talking with her, and, you know, she basically like backtracked and she's like you know i was just being a little hard on you she's like it it, it was <laughs> a big surprise and it was stressful um and i said well i won't put you on any more list if you don't want to be on a list and she's like no it's all right it's all right it's fine um and so they are in our honorable mention list Uh-oh. uh for yeah for this top 50 so we'll see if they get some new customers but if you are if you do want to be a customer at kolachny barbecue you better call ahead and my favorite thing about eating there was um the people lined up in front of me they sell the barbecue by the pound and they sell everything that's the same price per pound and when you line up you have your pot the the pot that you're going to bring your barbecue home back in and they so they weigh everything out right and the the regulars they've got their pot and they've got masking tape with the tear weight so that when they weigh the barbecue they you know the regulars that come in they know uh, they know exactly how much their pot weighs so they can wow. deduct that weight from <laughs> from what they're charging them so wow. yeah that's that's the only time though that I've been asked uh, to not put somebody on the list uh, Daniel in regards to the top 10 plenty of names that I have heard of However, they eke their way back up here to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. But I've heard of Panther and is it Ev- Evie Mays? Evie Mays. Evie Mays. Evie yes. Mays. Okay. And mm-hmm. uh, of course, ninth is Snows, seventh is Franklin. Both former number ones falling largely down. Uh, wasn't Snows and Franklin's one and two last release? Well, um, yeah. So we started naming a number one back in the 2008 list. And Snows was number one. Um, the next list, Franklin was number one. The next list, Snows was number one. So basically, Franklin and Snows have been uh, number one. One of those two have been number one for the last three lists, or or every list where we've named a number one. And so, yeah, this is the first time that neither of them are on there as who, as the number one. Who is number one? I've never heard of Goldies. Goldie's Barbecue, yeah, it's uh, so yeah, it's it's just this little pop up shop that I put together um, to try and get a bunch of business <laughs> here and uh, put myself number one. Now it's a brand new spot in Fort Worth, and it's it's it, there's no surprise that you haven't heard about it. Not anything to do with the quality of their barbecue, but the terrible timing of their opening. Uh, they opened outside of Fort Worth. It's like 12 miles from downtown. So it's a good ways outside of Fort Worth. Like you have to drive past the landfill to get there, uh, to give you some idea. And they opened in February of 2020. Uh, terrible, terrible timing. Oh. And they had to basically shut down their operation uh, three weeks in, and then they uh, they reopened a couple of weeks later as a takeout only. Like the the guys who own it are the only ones who work there. There are five of them. And they were basically working as car hops, like running out, taking your order, running back in, put packaging the meat up and, and uh, you know, bringing it back to your car. And they ran that way for months. And I mean, they were they said back then they were barely scraping by like four briskets a day. They were cooking and they just had never made it. They hadn't had a chance to make a name for themselves before the pandemic. And it was just really hard to get crowds out there. Once they opened up their dining room, they started to get more and more business. And, you know, they were, um, they were steadily growing. And, uh, but still like the last five, five times I've gone, um, there were like one or two people in line in front of me at 11 o'clock when they opened. Uh, so, you know, word hadn't really got out yet. The Dallas Morning News wrote about them, wrote very positively about them. But, you know, it's four guys who they're young and they're new to the game as far as owning their own place. But, I mean, they are essentially like barbecue veterans when you look at their uh, all of their history at some of the biggest names in barbecue of Franklin and Law Barbecue and Valentina's and Micklewaite. Like, oh, wow. they have worked at all these places and, you know, they came together, high school buddies. They came back together to open this place and run it and, you know, take all the lessons they learned from all these barbecue greats. And, you know, now they're certainly doing the most with it. Oh, 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 hold on. Are they going to be in trouble? Can they brace for the lines? I, I, don't, know if here? I don't know if they're, 
I don't know if they're going to be in trouble or not. Like that's up to them. You know, we, we talked about making or breaking. You know, the making or breaking. Uh, you, a barbecue joint that makes the list can do a lot to break themselves, and and that is being overwhelmed by the attention and by uh, focusing more on the the quantity than the quality. Right, uh, stuffing the smokers as full as you can possibly get so that you can feed as many possible as many people as possible because you don't want to turn anyone away. You don't want to lose that potential revenue. Uh, you can do that and, and put out not as good barbecue. And then, you know, pretty immediately uh, word will get around that you slipped or you can just take it in stride, cook a little bit more, a little bit more, do what you're comfortable with, do what you know that you can actually cook really, really well at the high level that got you at that place. Um, I mean, their biggest challenge is going to be the 35 parking spots. And they already joked about it. And <laughs> so there's not exactly street parking out on Dick Price Road where they're located. Uh, but be sure not to go past that 35 mile an hour speed limit. Looks like a country road, but the, the police are watching. I've seen somebody pulled over like almost every time I've gone out there. Of the list from 1 to 50, which one are you going to and why? Well, today I went to the Slow Bone. No, it's top no, no, 50 no. Place. Which one? Hold are on, you going? listen, listen, listen. So I went to the Slow Bone today because it's my regular spot. Uh, that's the one I love to go to here in Dallas. And after the last list came out, that was my first stop as well. After the list came out, and they didn't make it. And you know, I stopped in to basically take my licking, and you know. Let them know that I still love the place. It just wasn't one of the 50 best. And they've done a lot since then to improve the barbecue. And it showed. And, you know, they're on this this list here. And so my first barbecue stop after this list came out was to the Slow Bone. And, you know, the, the owner, Jeffrey Hobbs, he laughed because uh, he knew. He remembered four years ago when I came in. Uh, but, yeah, uh, which barbecue joint am I going to? I mean, I've always loved Leroy and Lewis. Um, I, you know, I've this, I've fallen in love with Goldie's recently um, because it is so new. Uh, Leroy and Lewis is one. Evan Leroy, I've been following him since he was at Friedman's, came and opened uh, Leroy and Lewis, and always been incredibly impressed with his barbecue. Um, but you know, there's plenty that aren't in the top fifty that I'm that I'll keep going back to. I mean, Heim Barbecue is one. Uh, they've got a location now. They've open in Fort Worth originally they've got a Dallas location now and you know you were talking about the the pork belly burn ends earlier like they uh, they made bacon burn ends famous in Fort Worth and so yeah places like that that I'll I'll still go back to because I know they're great barbecue joints and that's the thing we have a top 50 we've got 50 honorable mentions um, but every one of them really are great barbecue joints and that's why we're so blessed in Texas Jess Pryles was on the segment before you, and she had mentioned that there was a lot of people in the top 10, maybe the top 50, that aren't necessarily your, your prototypical Texas barbecue places. They're, as she put it, new schoolers. Uh, a, do you share that opinion? And she had also mentioned something about maybe having to start bracketing off that top 50 list into new school or old school slash traditional. Uh, just wondering your thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a new school of barbecue. I mean, some people call it craft barbecue. I don't really like that term uh, because it insinuates that the rest of barbecue is not craft. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certainly a new school, people who are uh, more willing to experiment with different cuts, uh, different sausage recipes, different sides, even smoking vegetables. Oh, my God. Uh, and so uh, as far as separating them out from one list to another list no i mean they are all texas barbecue and that's what makes texas barbecue special um you know once you start going traditional versus not traditional well what's the definition of traditional and you know that's the question i ask a lot of people who say they only eat traditional barbecue you know they they get on twitter and they say like uh you know well this or that item is not traditional texas barbecue i don't want anything to do with it it's like, you know, if they had Twitter around in the 1960s when brisket was being adopted throughout Texas, I know that they would have been 
the the Usain people, the different the versions of you from uh, 50, 60 years ago, would have been on uh, that version of Twitter saying that brisket stuff, that newfangled cut. I don't want anything to do with that. That's not traditional Texas barbecue. Where's my shoulder clod? So yeah, I don't I don't see the need to separate the two. The top 50 list was released yesterday. If you haven't seen it, make sure that you head on over to Texas Monthly and check it out. Daniel's website, tmbbq.com, or follow him on the Twitter at BBQ Central, uh, at BBQ Snob. You can follow me at BBQ Central Show on Twitter as well if you would like to. Sometimes we're uh, conversing in the Twitter verse, uh, but you can also see Daniel on this show once per quarter. Daniel, always appreciate the visit. Thanks for the extended time this evening, and we'll talk to you again soon. No quiz. Do you want to play a game? <laughs> I was looking forward to it. All right. You asked for it. I have a game for you. All right. Between these two songs, which one is the best? Cemetery Gate by Pantera. Or This Love by Pantera? Mm. I'm going Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. Sign of the Times. Final answer, of course. Between Cemetery Gates and This Love, Daniel Vaughn opts like Jess to go outside of the box with what song did you... Oh, Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. That answer, of course, is wrong. Closer than Jess's, but of course, not even an option. But we do thank you for playing, of course. And that's why we love him. He's the Texas Monthly Barbecue Editor right there. Daniel, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Love you, too. All right. Good night. Good night. There he is, Daniel Vaughn, right there. Yes. He thought I was going Harry Styles because, of course, I did the Harry Styles recap from Cleveland, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. Look, I'm not going to critique Harry Styles' stage presence. But when you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city, I think the concert thing to do whenever you're roaming into town is to mention the city by name 70 times. That's weak. We know where we are, right? We know we're in Cleveland. You know, like, Cleveland, how are you tonight, Cleveland? We know where we're at, pal. But what I would like is for you to reference that Cleveland is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. We're right down the street from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, man. It's crap. I don't even know if he sounds like that. Don't reference the city you're in. Do it up front. Get it over with. Let the crowd pop. Fine. Get off of it after that. I want to hear Cleveland this, Cleveland that. We know where we're at. But you have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame City right down the road from you. You didn't even reference it once. What the hell? Get that big stuff out of here. Give me some Rock and Roll Hall of Fame City reference. And while you're at it, and by the way, it's also the barbecue capital of the North Coast, man. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. We thank Daniel Vaughn for joining us this past segment. I'll talk to you quickly about Vortic Watch Company. A small batch custom watch manufacturing and vintage restoration company located in northern Colorado. They take, <laughs> pardon me, American pocket watches and turn them into wrist watches just like this one right here. Look at that sexy devil. Preserve and <laughs> preserve and enhance the legacy of manufacturing excellence in America. In order to do that, they combine traditional and cutting edge technology to create unique quality functional timepieces with exceptional value and here's the coolest part each watch that Vortic makes like this one right here completely unique and one of a kind Vortic founded on the motto that America wasn't assembled it was built check out VorticWatches.com we're back to wrap the show right after this stick around This is Brisketor, the Barbecue Wizard, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Bye-bye. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs. 
Injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Wimpy. All right, welcome back. We thank Daniel Vaughn once again for joining us. The great extended segment as we learn all about the top 50 process. We talk a little bit about Goldies because I was not familiar with Goldies yet, but it's new and not in the mix of last list that was released back in would have been 2017. I guess. So there you have it. All the way back in the first hour as we get ready to wrap up, we had Stephen Reichlin from Barbecue Bible, also plantedbarbecue.com. A little bit of a technical issue there. Not sure exactly what happened, but we'll fix that for next month, of course. After Stephen, it was Bob Trudnack, 2021 Barbecue Central Show guest Hall of Famer. The pizza spices are out. BobTrudnackBBQ.com is his website for all the products. Also, if you're interested in partnering with Bob in a spokesperson slash ambassador slash affiliation, take advantage of Bob. He's one of the most respected competition cooks out there. Won a lot, a lot, giving Lots of cooking classes, so I'm sure there's a potential relationship out there between you and Bob. In the second hour, Just Priles stopped by for a visit, justpriles.com. For recipes, hardcorecarnivore.com. For spices and rubs and other such retail items. And closing out the show was Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly. Texas Monthly BBQ or tmbbq.com being the website. And you can follow him at BBQ Snob on Twitter where he is often interacting with a bunch of the barbecue lovelies and luminaries. Big show planned for you next week, of course. Embedded correspondents are back. We'll be talking about the KCBS state competition, giving our takes there. We will also be talking with Derek Riches, plus a number of other guests as well lined up. So how do I always leave you? September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. And until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. Hey, what's up? This is JM, host of the Celebrity Grill podcast on iTunes. And you're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Network. All barbecue and grilling all the time. <laughs>